The central character of Verne's book, Captain Hatteras, is so obsessed with this idea, it ultimately drives him mad. He's English, and so were many of the real-life sailors who tried to explore the Northwest Passage and to reach the North Pole in the first half of the 19th century. Their stories are reflected in Verne's novel, and in this program, we'll be hearing about the extreme hardships faced by members of those expeditions and trying to eliminate why going to the North Pole still attracts adventurous spirits like myself. The record-breaking polar explorer Pen Haddo believes it's time for a new addition to the curriculum, a sense of adventure. I believe strongly that we are overprotecting children and in so doing are actually seriously disabling a whole generation of children who simply have not got the skills born out of experience as to how to interact with their world. It's a tragedy and we're going to pay a very heavy price for it. Many children at school these days barely leave the classroom. At the moment, the school's target is just two hours of sport a week. Get them outdoors. Get them exploring, interpreting and understanding the world in which they live. And suddenly the lights come on. It's an exciting process. The whole learning process comes alive to them. It's relevant to their lives. It is absolutely critical to the success of our educational system for these children to learn all that they can learn and to be excited about learning, to do it in an outdoor environment. This is probably when Penn is at his most vulnerable. If a polar bear attacks, he can't reach his gun and he could drown in the icy water. That's my biggest fear uh, because I've had recurring nightmares about that in a way that I've never had before uh, on previous attempts on this uh, expedition. So, uh, and that's drowning through, th falling through thin ice or, or snow covered water. Um, or indeed uh, inverting in my immersion suit um, with air rising to my feet in the suit and uh, forcing me upside down. So even though his immersion suit allows him to plot a straight line to the pole and thus take the shortest route, this is a manoeuvre he'll perform only when he has to. Tardiness is another major threat. Up to 10 hours a day, walking on the ice, clambering over pressure ridges and swimming through open water have taken their toll. And there are still at least 30 more days to go. I noticed in reviewing some of my videotape of earlier part of the exhibition that I was using the wrong words. I, knew, I was saying the right words in my head, but the wrong words were coming out, or in the wrong order, or the numbers were back to front, which is very much a feature of um, sort of brain function at, at really cold temperatures in the minus 40 to minus 50 degree bracket. Probably still talking garbage. Fatigue, cold, and the relentless mechanical process of moving one ski in front of the other are taking their toll. Penn has now all but given up many of his mental exercises, such as designing yachts and buildings in his head. I think about the bait, and within three seconds, five seconds, I was thinking about basically about navigating, because that seemed to be easier. Couldn't maintain a sequence of thoughts. Aware of the tricks the mind can play in such circumstances, Penn now tries to find other ways to focus his thoughts. There were two Penn Haddos out there. There was Penn Haddo the guide and Penn Haddo the explorer. I was treating myself as if I was a client. That way, I would be much less likely to injure myself or lose my life. If that didn't work, what seemed to naturally kick in was this image I had of, of my son, Wilf, um, picking daffodils in his shorts um, around Easter time. And it was a beautiful, beautiful image I had of, of my son and our house. And um, I thought, well, if I died, I wouldn't be able to ever see Wilf like that again. On the morning of day 45, Penn senses he's approaching thin ice. Reflexes take over and he undoes the toe straps of his skis. Falling through the ice would be bad enough, but with the skis tightly fixed to his feet, he might never be able to climb out of the water with fatal consequences. So part of his mind is aware there's danger ahead. And normally at times like this, the image of his son would make him think twice about committing himself to thin ice. But this time, his mental defences have been completely eroded. The picture of Wilf is buried too deep. It didn't kick in. And it was the first time that it hadn't kicked in. 
alarm bell should have been ringing in my head deafeningly loud. So I skied out across this thin ice. The edge started to cave in as my full weight got loaded onto it. So you find yourself skiing deeper and deeper in the water, trying to go almost uphill up the ice to climb back out onto better ice, but you can't ski fast enough forwards uh, compared to the, the, the speed at which the ice is sinking. And of course it does break up eventually. And we're talking about it over about a second or two, all of this happens. The overriding sensation I had was of shock that I had let myself get into this situation. I, could, I suddenly realized how foolish I'd been.